The legend of Tom Dooley has captivated the hearts and minds of people for many years. This was one of America's first highly publicized crimes of passion. And it goes all the way back to the time of the American Civil War. Tom Dooley was locally known as Tom Dula. However, the spelling or pronunciation of his name would have no bearing on his fate. One of the people who became captivated with this American tragedy was Charlotte Barnes. So much so that she was compelled to spend decades in pursuit of the truth. Charlotte Corbin Barnes, yes. author of a great new book, an exciting book. We're here at Whippoorwill Academy, and this is a place that celebrates a part of American history. So why don't you tell us, uh, Charlotte, how you first discovered this person, Tom Dooley. Tom Dooley, um, I was a scrawny little nine-year-old fifth grader out uh -huh. in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I was bedridden for six months. I had an abscess tooth that sent a toxin to my brain. Mm -hmm. That was the same time that the Kingston Trio came out with the song, Hang Down Your Head, Tom Dooley. I had to go to bed at sundown every night while the family watched the new TV in the living room. But I would try to stay awake because I was so afraid I would die during the nighttime. I identified with this gentleman who was going to die tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I, I felt that he just could not have killed this beautiful young girl. I didn't even know her name. Right. And I thought at that time that this was a romance between Grayson and Tom and this beautiful girl. Of course, that's not what it was at all, but that's what I thought back in 58. And uh, so I would sing along with it and harmonize and cry. And my mother was trying to keep me calm and she'd say, I can't understand why you're so upset over someone that who never even existed. I got better, my parents divorced, mm -hmm. and I graduated from high school, married Bill, had a daughter, and life went on. Then we started our own video production mm -hmm. business, mm -hmm. and we were looking through the newspaper for the projects to right. document, and this headline leaped out at me, said the local lady is starting a Tom Dooley museum in the mountains, and I said, Tom Dooley? Could this right. be my Tom Dooley? And it was. Tell me when you read that, I mean, what went through your mind as soon as you read that? He was real. Right. My mother was wrong. That was the first <laughs> thing that threw my mind. We got in touch with Edith and got some facts over the phone. And she's the one that built Whippoorwill Academy. She loves history. Right. and. The, the history is so rich around them. I mean, Daniel right. Boone lived at Beaver Creek, right. and Tom lived just up the road here. Tom had been a, a Confederate soldier. He'd been taken prisoner and right. held in a, a Union right. prison camp. I, it was just amazing. I, w I was just eating it up, you know. Right. <laughs> so Charlotte, looks like we're at the Tom Dooley Museum. Yes, this is the second, the expanded version of right. the Tom Dooley Museum. Um, this was another cabin that was donated. Now these paintings were, were significant for you in the beginning, weren't they? Yes, she painted 65 uh, depictions of things that happened during uh, his life okay. and used those for the school. The first one she did was Tom here in his uniform. Is that what you thought he might look like? Oh, yes. Is that it? <laughs> right. This journey that's brought you from where you were as a little child in Albuquerque to where you are now, it really wasn't about this book, was it? No. Tell us how that it's, started. We wanted to do a documentary for public television. Okay. So you and, you and your husband, Bill? Yes. Okay. I, when I saw that article in the paper, I said, I found my project. This is right. what I want to work on. I'm finally going to prove that Tom Dooley was innocent. So that's what got us started. But I gathered so much information, there's no way with it that we could have put that into a one-hour documentary. Right. I mean, when the book came out, it's 500 pages. Right. So, so. it could have been a 1,000 pages. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you get me talking about Tom. And, and there's so many little things. Well, while we're here, tell us about a couple of these other uh, uh, paintings that represent characters in this story. 
Well, this is Laura Foster, the girl who was murdered. Okay. And everyone here in the valley thought she was a wonderful girl. Right. She was a weaver. Who's this other lady? This is the femme fatale here. Um, what did you call her? The femme fatale. <laughs> Explain that. She was carrying on an affair with Tom when they were very young. But I believe her mother was wanting her to marry a, a gentleman who could provide her with the necessities of life. So Which would not have been Tom. No, he <laughs> was he was a happy-go-lucky musician, right. and you know how musicians are. <laughs> right. Uh, the local legend was that Tom had gone off to the war, and so Anne got tired of waiting and instead married the local cobbler. Well, that wasn't true because she married the cobbler two years before the war started. So <clears throat> she was married uh, to the cobbler. Mm -hmm. She married him before the war started. Yes. Okay. The marriage did not interrupt her affair <laughs> with Tom <laughs> Dooley. <laughs> so was Tom and Laura still friends at that time, too? I don't, I don't think that Laura was part of his life until after the war was over. Oh, okay. Personally. So, 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 so your thoughts are that Tom had an affair with the married lady. Mm -hmm. He goes off to war. He comes back, and that's when he meets Laura Foster. I believe so. And if that happened, and they become companions, and then the other lady, should she come calling again? Um, the other lady was still involved. She okay. struck up her uh, relationship with Tom immediately after he came back. But will we really ever know who killed Laura Foster? Another thing that Edith told me on the phone was um, that Tom um, had been defended by the Confederate governor of the state. And my first question was, why would the governor come to the mountains and defend this penniless right, man, right. and um, a lot of the people believed that it was because Tom had served in his unit in the army, and this was the second thing I found out, that Tom had not. Um, Governor Vance's unit was the 26th, and uh, Tom had been, he served in the 42nd, so right, that right. was a myth that went out the window. Both Ann Melton and uh, Tom were arrested mm -hmm. and put into jail. And I feel the reason that Governor Vance came was not to defend Tom so much as it was to defend Ann, because Ann's husband, this cobbler, James Melton, had served in Vance's uh, 26th Regiment and had been wounded twice at Gettysburg. Those trips that you made up uh, here, how, ma how many would you say you made over the years? Oh. 70. I mean, wow. Because wow. I, we not only came here, um, I would go to the local libraries, to their heritage rooms, mm -hmm. and the first question I'd ask is, do you have a Tom Dooley file? Mm -hmm. And they'd go and in the heritage room and pull out their Tom Dooley file, and mm -hmm. I would make notes of everything new in that file. I guess the thing that's so compelling about your story uh, Charlotte is this has been a very long journey hasn't it a wonderful a wonderful <laughs> Edith turned me loose she said after you get done with this book you can write a novel that tell what your gut tells you really right. happened and so, that's so you've got the fa you've got the facts down now you've got the Tom Dooley files yeah probably the largest collection that anyone's put together uh, we interviewed her mother-in-law who um, <laughs> loved Tom Dooley even more than she did, if possible. Oh, he sang and played and said he could make that fiddle absolutely cry. Absolutely cry. He's quite a character, Tom Dooley was. The last one that she introduced us to, and it took us a while to get him, was Morgan Shepherd. And. Milton uh, was my great great grandmother. And he said, I don't care if it's my mother, my sister, or who it is. He said, I would like to see the truth come out, and I'm so glad that someone is searching for the truth. I was interested in the uh, origin of the song, so she um, made arrangements for us to talk with Frank Prophet Jr who told us that his father had sung the song to two folk uh, song collectors from New York City mm -hmm. that had come down to the mountains 
to purchase a dulcimer. Uh -huh. um, and this was Frank Prophet Sr., 1938. Wow. They came down um, to pick britches uh -huh. in the mountains to collect songs, and they said that the, the best um, player, picker, mm -hmm. and um, songster was Frank Prophet. It was June 5th, 1938, when we first reached the house on Beach Mountain. A crowd of some 25 kinfolk and neighbors were waiting for us, with guitar, homemade banjos, dulcimers, fiddles, and French harps. Before long, everybody was making music. The sound and the people that afternoon gave us a feeling we had never lost. It was the beginning of our lifelong interest in traditional music and the people who remember it. The best singer and guitar player among them turned out to be Nathan's son-in-law, Frank Prophet. The third song that my father sang was uh, Tom Dooley, and his wife Ann, uh, Frank, uh, Frank Warner's wife Ann, took it down as uh, Hang Down Your Head, Tom Dewey, because he was the governor of New York. <laughs> and, and she had him on his mind, I reckon. And, but fortunately, she corrected it later. <laughs> Or it may have never made Dad so when the Kingston tree over net. <laughs> That's how it was uh, collected in that version, the family version. That was the version my great-grandmother had handed down. Adeline Purdue, she lived in Wilkes County, and, it, and she went to his hanging in Statesville on May 1st, 1868, and she said she heard him in there in the, a jail cell singing that ballad. Apparently he had composed himself because I killed little Laurie Foster playing it on his old um, homemade banjo. Another door that Edith opened was uh, the youngest person that we interviewed, Sam Mass Jr., who was related to Carson Dula, who was Tom Dooley's best friend and the local moonshine producer. Uh -huh. And he was very interesting. Um, he said that in his later life, he wouldn't talk about Tom much. Um, One thing for sure, uh, if he was followed suit with, with a lot of the other doulas in the family. The doulas have always had a, a, a temper of sorts. But the one thing that Sam told us that really was surprising was that from his research, he believed that the girl who was murdered, Laura Foster, had been a union sympathizer. Let me ask you something. Is this ever going to be over? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what will come next. Um, I know my husband is um, in the process of wanting it to become a movie. Yeah, sure. So we'll see about that. And what surprises me is now you're I don't bound to die. Hang your head, Tom Dooley, oh, hang your head and cry. Hillary Foster, now you're bound to die. I love our country roads in the Carolinas.